This is the second video in a series of videos that help us solve a simple linear programming problem, particularly a linear programming problem that has a maximization objective function. If you need to review the problem or what our decision variables are or what the objective function is or what the model constraints are, please see the previous video. So in this video, we are going to solve this problem using a graphical solution. So I have already created my uh, graph here with X and, uh, X1 and X2 coordinates. So on my X1 axis, that is <clears throat> right here, you'll see that I've labeled it and we have tons of fuel additive along our X axis and along our, what is typically our Y axis, I've labeled this X2 and this is our tons of fuel solvent. And we know that to be the case because in the previous video, we said that we would let X1 equal the total tons of fuel additive and let X2 be the total tons of solvent base. <clears throat> so we are going to go ahead and plot our, restraint, our constraints along the graph. So let's go ahead and look at our first constraint. So our first constraint was for material one. We solved this in a previous video. So if you need help with that, see the previous video. Um, where our first constraint is two-fifths x1 plus one-half of x2 must be less than or equal to 20. So we'll just select this. And what we are going to do is we are now going to solve for our x and y intercepts so that we can plot a line along our graph. So first we are going to get rid of the inequality and we're just going to say two fifths of x1 plus one half of x2 is equal to 20. And then we can solve for either x1 or x2, but let's solve for x1 first. So to solve for x1, we're gonna say that two fifths of x1 plus one half of x2, but we're gonna set x2 is equal to zero, is equal to 20. So what we get is 2 fifths x1 is equal to 20. So 2x1 is equal to 20 times five. So x1 is equal to 100 divided by two, which means that x1 is equal to 50. So in other words, this line for this constraint intercepts our x1 axes at point 50. So we'll put that right here. Now we've solved for x1, let's solve for x2. So again, we're gonna go 2 fifths x1 plus 1 half x2 is less than or equal to 20. We'll get rid of the inequality and we'll just say that two fifths x1 plus one half x2 must be equal to 20. This time we're gonna set x1 is equal to zero. So two fifths times zero plus one half x2 is equal to 20. So that means that one half x2 is equal to 20, which means that x2 is equal to 20 times 2, so x2 is equal to 40. So what we've done is we found our x and y, or x1 and x2 intercepts, so x2 at 40, so it means that it intercepts right here. And all we're gonna do now is we're going to draw our line through these two points. And we can label our constraint so that we don't get confused. And we'll say that this line was represented of two fifths of x1 plus one half x2 at less than or equal to 20. 
So that's our first constraint. This is otherwise known as material one. So let's go back up and we'll find our other constraints. So we'll leave material two for the time being. Let's look at material three. So material three had the following constraint. Perfect, so let's go ahead and solve for x1 and x2. So we let x1 equal zero, uh, x2 equal zero the first time, so let's let x1 equal zero the first time. So again, we're gonna get rid of the um, equality. So we're just gonna say x1 plus 3 tenths x2 is equal to 21. This time, we'll set x1 is equal to zero first, 3 fifths times zero plus 3 tenths x2 is equal to 21. So that means that 3, 3 tenths x2 is equal to 21. So that means 3x2 is equal to 21 times 10. So x2 is equal to 210 divided by 3. So x2 is equal to 70. So we can go back up on our graph here and we'll find x2. We notice that x2 equals 70 when x1 is equal to zero. And then finally we'll solve for x1. So 3 fifths x1 plus 3 tenths x2 is equal to 21. This time we'll set x2 is equal to zero. So 3 fifths x1 plus 3 tenths times 0 is equal to 21. So that means that 3 fifths x1 is equal to 21. So that means that 3x1 is equal to 21 times 5, which means that x1 is equal to 105 divided by 3, which gives us x1 is equal to 35. So we'll go up here, x1 is equal to 35. And now all we're gonna do is draw our line between these two points. And we can go zoom back in and we can label this constraint line. So our constraint here was that 3 fifths x1 plus 3 tenths x2 less than or equal to 21. This was also material three. Just to label it so that we know in the future. And then finally, we had one more constraint that we kind of left. That was this constraint right here. This was for material two. So one, one fifth of x2 must be less than or equal to five. So one fifth x2 less than or equal to five. So x2 is equal to, one fifth x2 is equal to five. So x2 is equal to 25. What do we notice? Well, we notice that there's no um, x1 intercept here. So we're just gonna plot this right here and we will draw our horizontal line. It will continue on this way forever. And we can label this as one fifth 
2 less than or equal to 5 and this was material 2. Okay, so now that we have that, let's identify our feasibility region. So for the material 1, 2 fifths x1 plus 1 half x2 less than or equal to 20, we'll notice that it was less than. So we have we're looking for a region that is less than this line. For material three, we'll notice that we have three fifths x1 plus three tenths x2 less than or equal to 21. So again, we're looking for a region that is less than this line. And then finally, our third constraint was material two at one fifth x2 less than or equal to five which means that it must be below this line here, which really gives us only one area where all of the constraints are met. And then that area is right here. So we shade this in. And we call this our feasibility region. Okay, we'll continue solving this problem in another series of videos, but for now, this is how we plot the graphical solution to our two decision problem, two decision variable linear programming problem. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.